What's going on, guys and gals? Welcome back for this week's episode of the Insider Gaming News. I'm joined today by Drunk Canadian and Protato Pleb, which were both absent last week. We had <laughs> kind of rotating hey, everybody out this this bunch of last couple weeks, at least. Um, but yeah, dude, we got a lot of like a lot of weird and kind of crazy stuff that happened this week. Um, I don't even know where to start with some of it, man. Like, it's just there's a lot. There's a lot. Uh, let's start by like what we've been trying to do lately is like what do you guys been playing this week? What's been exciting? What's uh, what's new? What's crazy? What's not so exciting? Tell me, what do you guys what do you guys uh, got? Well, today was an exciting day for me because I got to turn on my computer for the first time in two weeks. But I did get a Nintendo Switch. I've been playing the shit out of Breath of the Wild, which, as far as I'm concerned, when people said that that game alone was worth buying that console, I was like, nah, that can't be true. Totally true. The game's amazing. Right. I know I'm like a year behind and I'm like living under a rock, but it's so good. Oh, no, it, it's the same thing. Like, that's the only reason I bought my Switch was because my uh, my younger brother go, went and bought, well, my adopted brother, he, gave, he went and bought it and gave me Zelda. I'm like, I don't even have the console. He's like, no, nah, you have a reason to. He just looked at me dead in the now face you like. <laughs> you better buy it now. Now nah, you need it. Yeah, and he's like, now you need it. Now you better be here, buddy. Yeah, get some of that. Well, because like, didn't Switch come out last year and it like one game, like, game of the year like late in the year yeah yeah so that was I played every zelda except for uh this newest one that's on the switch so yeah i gotta i, I gotta get one of those myself too bro it's so good no oh, they're 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 pretty fun and it's and it's so easy to get into like with some of the games like there's actually a couple of the games that came out this week bad north and um uh Murphy's law or Murphy's law that was like it was a game where you, it was a shooter where you go and shoot each other and the more you kill each other they you take their like body mass and the more you kill people the bigger you get and the, the more you get killed the more you shrink so it's kind of kind of a wild shooter that just came out this week too so that was kind of cool um you're getting like a ton of games on there now oh yeah i mean the, the game support on that is like almost twice the amount of um the wii and the wii u combined almost like what now was it like 15 million copies for like the wii u over its entire lifetime and like Something like 16 or 17 million copies of the fucking Switch were sold in the first year. Yeah, yeah, and it's like it's it's already going going crazy. It's it's insane. It's insane. I think the only gripe I had with the Zelda game was the fact that your weapons break all the time. That was the only change. I was like, man. And then I got the Master Sword, and I was like, yes, a sword that won't break, but it runs out of energy, and then it basically breaks and then respawns. I was like, come on, Zelda. Oh man. <laughs> oh man. But like. It's just, I don't know, like, that mechanic, I get why they did it, because it was, like, huge open world, but I, I don't know why that triggered me so much. I was just like, man, this is not like any Zelda ever. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that is kind They're of weird. Like, I, bows just to, like, shoot things, and, like, ugh. I, yeah, like, I haven't even gotten to play it that much yet. My brother's played it a lot more, and he, he says it's, like, super fun. He's never played, um, he actually hasn't even played the last, like, three or four Zelda games. Like, the last one I really, like, sat down and hard played through was... Um, a crony of a crony of time or ocarina of time on the so N64. So the new one feels like that. It has a very ocarina of time feel, but like, man, the world is so huge. Yeah, I've seen some really cool like videos about how they do like all kinds of trick stuff and all this random stuff you could do with like your weapons and all these different like little gadgets you get. Yeah, the oh, gameplay yeah, looks nice. great. 
so much fun. That's good. That's good. What about you, Potato Play? What have you been playing this week? Oh, man. I think uh, since the last time I was on this show, I, um, let us see. I built Hydroid Prime. <laughs> I built Zephyr Prime. I built Banshee Prime. Basically, I've just been like cracked out on Warframe for like two weeks straight. Somebody should probably send help. I, you got? <laughs> did you get that uh, Necros Prime that I? I, I oh yeah, with? yeah, yeah, yeah. Finished cooking Necros Prime. I've got. Oh yeah, Frost Prime. Now, like I've just been cracking the hell out on on Warframe. So that's pretty much all I have to report is uh, Space Ninja. More, more, <laughs> more, more Warframe, more things. Yeah. I guess other news. I, I unfortunately joined the Mountain Dew CS:GO Open League. Uh oh. Oh, you actually did it. Oh man. I did it. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Why I, unfortunately? Uh, cause it's with this team I was with before and they were very immature and we played like one scrim and got decimated cause we played like an open scrim. So we were playing like a pro team basically. So we obviously didn't do that well. And as soon as it over, they're like, man, all the practicing was for nothing and they all quit. So like, no, it's oh, been really? some by, months. By, by definition of rage quitting. <laughs> yeah. Like, and then I was just left and like the people that still wanted to play were like, do you want to run the team? I'm like, no, I want to fucking run this team. This is terrible. Oh man. <laughs> So I guess they're back together, and uh, they needed a fifth for the Mountain Dew Open League. So yeah, apparently that's what I'll be doing. Oh man, uh, I actually get, well, so good luck. I hope that goes <laughs> well, good, last man. Last time I played with these guys, I was carrying them pretty hard, so I wouldn't imagine they've gotten much better. So I'm assuming it's gonna be hey, more. Of one can hope, right? One can hope. Well, yeah, I can totally hope, but I, you know, I don't know. I'm sure it'll be streamed live at some point. <laughs> um, I, can't I got handle, I can't handle CS:GO. I'm so bad at it, dude. Everybody's bad at CSGO. Everybody Everybody's is. bad. I do, I do. Yeah, however, love the new league. There's bad, and then there's, like, there's me. Like You're an actual potato? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Like, absolutely a potato. I, I do I do love the new, like, UI and look and feel of it and everything. It actually feels really good now. And I, I like that they've actually been patching all the little bugs they've been finding, like, people have been finding with it, too. So, I will yeah, say that the new really UI actually it. looks pretty dope, dude. Yeah, it's way more modernized now. Like... When I they honestly into, really yeah, needed that. Like, Whoa, this looks completely different. Yeah, they needed it badly, dude. That game's look uh, looked outdated for years. Yeah. Granted, it's been out for years, but like, right. Yeah. What's well, like a twelve? It's like almost twelve years old now. But it's still one of the most popular okay, games yeah. anywhere on the market, you know. So it's like, yeah, it's time for them to update that. Uh, they did a good job. It looks nice. Yeah, I know. It's definitely a lot better. So it's a oh, yeah. so one of the one of the games I've been playing or got to play the last couple of days only because it went on its like open alpha or not well it's like a closed alpha I guess for this weekend was the Dying Light Bad Blood uh, got out and it's actually so surprisingly it's not just a, a, a just a normal battle royale you're gonna drop in and you know fight your your guys and do all that kind of stuff but you actually have an objective so you're it's a co op it's like a, it's basically a co op PvP thing which is really kind of oxymoroni but. So you basically get in, you have to go and farm for the samples, like these blood samples for these things, like these little pus pockets, basically. But they're always covered by zombies of some sort. And some of them are harder than others because they have like the like the juggernaut zombies or the spitter zombies or something like that. And you basically got to get in and get a thousand samples. And most of them are worth like 150 to 400, depending on how hard they are. But you have to get in there and try to get it while either so another player can kill you or the zombies can kill you. And you can still modify weapons and do all that stuff, and it's all melee. There's no guns or anything aside of, um, like, the bows, basically, that I found yet so far, anyway. And it feels super good. And it's like... What game is this? This is Dying Light Bad Blood, their, their BR expansion, basically. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So it's going to be the last part they do on their main Dying Light game. Um, but then, of course, we've got Dying Light 2 that's going to be coming out next year. But... It's fantastic. It's really, really good so far. I really like the feel of it. The, the gameplay feels super fun. Um, I had a lot of fun with it this last weekend, so that's that's been a a big blast. It's also gonna it's also gonna have that same problem though. What we're gonna talk about later in the show with how battle royales are uh, doing it wrong. After I think we've we've talked they're about their it a couple own times. Worst enemy. Yeah, they're they're, they're their own worst enemy. Like Almost every episode, we, like, reference Fortnite, how they're doing it right, and how everybody else is trying to trailblaze up a fucking washed-out mountain. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, I it's, think that, I think that, so, like, I think that there could be room for, for developers to sell a Battle Royale game, like, to not have it free to play, but it just has to be unique. 
you know like it's got to be something that's super unique it can't be the same old recipe that companies everybody... are already doing that it's called you know? call of duty battlefield the main game is the regular game and then you buy the game and you get their vr yeah I mean, yeah, but, but I mean, but works. people are gonna buy those no matter what, you know. Yeah, but I mean, that way it definitely works. Yeah. If you had a core, you, you gotta have as good content. as something else to pay for it, and then you had a BR as like a side feature. But selling BRs as a whole, no, like the whole game. That's like, that's where it's that's failing. Your game, it's a BR. That's that fails. I mean, because even Fortnite didn't even start as a BR. It's a it's a Save the World yeah. edition was first, and that has its base game, and then it expanded to free BR version on top of it. Which I think, yeah. and all in all, that was a good route. I mean, even though their main game is going to be free to play at some point too, so you're going to have that going for you. But um, well, yeah, because basically Fortnite Battle Royale is carrying everything for them right now. Yeah, Save the World's not doing shit. I mean, people still play it, and it's awesome, but. That's not their well, money maker. We'll, we'll come back to this one because we got a couple big topics to talk about in these Battle Royale things. But, man, like, there's just, oof. Um, we do have a cool trailer. So the Life is Strange 2 uh, official trailer finally came out. And I'm really kind of wondering. I don't know if you guys have seen it or not. If not, you're going to see it right now. But where's Captain Spirit? Like, the guy you get to play in this demo reel of basically Life is Strange 2. And, um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. So we're going to go cue to that uh, that video real quick. So hang tight. What are we gonna do now? There's nothing we can't do. I have no idea where we are. It feels like we're walking nowhere. I don't think Daniel understands what's going on. I can't tell him the truth now. I just can't. How am I supposed to take care of us out here? Nothing we can't do. As long as we're together. So the trailer, like, really doesn't get to tell us much about it. Aside of, like, it kind of leads to somebody potentially having powers, it seems like, possibly. But I'm just like, what the hell is going on here? Yeah, it's a little strange, eh? I mean, like, life is strange. <laughs> I see what I said, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> like, I mean, it, like... Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Whenever I push my push-to-talk button, it's making weird noises in my ear, so that's why I asked. <laughs> Did you try yelling at it? <laughs> uh, okay, now it's working. Never mind. I apparently I did have to yell at it. Uh oh. Well, it was just the threat of being yelled at. The threat of being yelled at. Now it's what. But yeah, no that. Yeah, there's really not much in that trailer to to really deduce anything. You know, like maybe Captain Spirit is is in it or not. Who fucking knows? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it looks like entirely different kids uh, on the whole thing, which is kind of interesting. So I don't know. Um, going on to our next topic, actually, Potato Plot, you might be excited about this one. Uh, so next weekend, next Saturday, uh, the De Destiny 2 is going to be releasing the Gambit mode for free for all Destiny owners to play for 24 hours. And, um, which I think is going to be cool because I think that's going to be one of their big PvP modes that everybody's really going to want to play. Because it's that, you know, I guess it's kind of essentially co-op PvP to some degree because you got to fight against the, uh, the NPCs, and then then you kind of basically try to fuck each other over and trip each other over with other NPCs or harder NPCs, which would be kind of crazy to see. I'm really curious to see how it's going to turn out. Although I'm really pissed it's happening the weekend that I'm gone. <laughs> so I got tricked into buying that game. Tricked? How'd you get tricked into buying it? On console, of all places. <laughs> hey, I have it on um, PS4. 
No, because my buddy always plays Xbox, and then he started messaging my wife about it. And she didn't know anything about it. And then she started looking into it and was like, why don't we get this game? And then, like, one thing to led to another, and then she ended up buying it. Now I have to play it on console. Well, Rip, you got to get it on PC now. Shit. No, I can't buy it again. I won't. <laughs> so that's my thing. Like, I, I'm not really using my console hardly at all these days. And I'm still, I, I don't care how good they made Destiny 2. Like, I really don't care. Like, I'm over, I'm just over it, dude. I might, I might give Gambit a try, uh, you know, or whatever, if it's going to be free. But, like, I just can't spend any more money on that game, dude. You know? I just, yeah. I just can't. I'm, t- I'm just. Uh, I'm, I'm still, still debating on even it. even owning it to begin with, really. But uh, yeah. should, for me, just... the biggest problem, like, is that I don't care how good they make Destiny Two because the way that they're making it good is by making it Destiny One again. Yeah. And like, they should have never came out with Destiny Two if their solution to making Destiny Two good and bringing the player base back is to make it Destiny One. It's like, get out of here, man. I'm mad about it. I'm mad. I've already spent a lot of money on the game, you know? It's just wait for Division 2 when they're like, this doesn't work, and they start bringing it to the end game Division 1. Oh, God. I hope they don't do that. But Ubisoft, I don't know. You never know with Ubisoft anymore. I mean, they've been doing a lot better. I'll give them that. They've been doing a fantastic job with their current IPs. And Destiny 2, I mean, not Destiny 2, Division 2 is the first one that they're actually releasing a sequel to out of their big stuff aside of, like, you know, the Ghost Recon series and stuff like that. So it should be kind of interesting to see what they do with that. Like if it's if it's really gonna be a, a tr- you know a true sequel or if it's just gonna be a copy and paste in a different locale and setting. So that'll be interesting to see. Um, yeah. One yeah. of our and the game mode does look interesting. That's oh dude, I can't wait for it. It's gonna be so much fun. I I, I really love the first um, division, so I'm excited. Um, some big news this week, which I was actually really surprised this happened. This was actually news yesterday. That uh, Daybreak Games is shutting shutting down uh, H1Z1 Just Survive, which um, on Imperium News and throughout the Imperium, that was actually a really big game for a long time. Um, we used to have a partnership with Daybreak and did a lot of cool stuff on Just Survive and tested it out and everything. But apparently, uh, we are their quote is, we are no longer in a position to fulfill its greatness, which means, I mean, to me that means is a lot of it is just how they've kind of failed with H1Z1 even as the Battle Royale by itself and just survive because then, you know, they, they have everybody trying to work on um, the Battle Royale and not really giving much love to just survive. And I don't think they have the, the budget or staff to, to really support it the way they want it to. So, so well, they also wait. don't have the player base, you know? No. So, no. That's, so that's different from H1Z1 King of the Kill or King of the whatever? Yeah. Well, it's just yeah, H1Z1 so now. Originally, when it launched, when H1Z1 launched, like, that survival mode was like the main mode, and then it had a battle royale with it. It was, was a, like, and it was a mod. It was a Brandon Green PUBG mod, basically. Yep. So, and, so this is people, just like H one Z one. Like H one Z one is dying. Well, yeah. So like the, the yeah, just that's the, it. yeah, exactly. Then they split it's it. It's kind of weird too because like H one Z one is like supposed to be some strain of fucking zombie or disease or some shit, right? I don't know. I never really played the survival mode, but but. Like, how does that how does that change the game you know like why is it even called h1z1 now <laughs> you know what i mean like there's no story behind it if they if they shit can just survive well it's kind of funny because they it, you know it started out as h1z1 that was the the game as a whole with the battle royale and the survival and all in one then they split it split it to h1z1 just survive and then king of the kill and then they just renamed king of the kill to just h1z1 again and then just survive is just survive and then just survive is I, not surviving <laughs> <laughs> I think honestly, yeah. I think honestly, it's not gonna have a prisoner punch monitor like, anymore. I'm not even sure they knew what they wanted to do with that. No, no, you know what I'm and that's saying? the problem. Because like, because like what you're saying there, and I know I kind of watched it along that whole path too when it was going through all those changes, and it's like I don't think they ever really knew what they wanted to do with the game. So of course people are like you know turned off by it i guess you know yeah it's and- weird it's weird though and i think it also kind of goes to show that like even though a lot of people are like i don't know freaking battle royale but people play battle royales dude you know some of these games like it's spe- like fortnite as well like they spent like seven or eight years working on their uh save the world mode you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and then they slap together battle royale in like a couple months and then everybody knows about their game all of a sudden yeah so it's like 
yeah, it, it went down a weird kind of a good path at, at start, but then PUBG killed H1Z1 essentially because it was, you know, a better version of it at the time, especially. And even now it just feels too arcadey for me. I can't, I can't even play it anywhere, hardly. In terms I of feel the like rail. H1Z1 is, uh, it like, it'll do better on console now. Yeah, if anything. Because there's not much battle royale, like, at least right now anyways, I think all you have is uh, H1Z1 and Fortnite, correct, on PlayStation? Yeah, it's just those two. Uh, well, and I think Crossout also is there too. Yeah, Realm Royale is coming to PlayStation. Yeah, Realm Royale is also there. Too. Yeah. Uh, Pudge says, I, when H1Z1, I couldn't couldn't play it for not having 64 bit and then two years later no games were playing it yeah and that was that was partially because nobody could get we couldn't get any more keys to sanctuary we couldn't do any of the cool stuff with it anymore and that really kind of killed that for for goons anymore anyway so that really sucked i mean honestly h1z1 like the battle royale mode probably i don't know how long that can really last either dude like it's really uh unfriendly to new players you know what i mean so like if they're trying Most to bring new players are, into though. the game yeah, that's true. A lot, a lot of them really are. That's so. like super new, newbie friendly. Like, there's no ranking structure. I mean, there is in what Rem Royale has one. Yeah. Well, there, there is a ranking structure, but it's 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 been there a lot longer than most of the other ones too. But it's just not very. Um, but like Fortnite, you're just moving like with everybody. Same with PUBG. Like you, you would yeah, have like, like Shroud I or can Ninja. Jump into, like I can jump into any of those games and have like an all right time, but every time I jump into to H one Z one, everybody just fucking two taps me instantly, dude. Yeah, it's like that's everybody who still plays that game is literally a pro at the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's the just problem. Correct if you're a new person. Like at least in like you know even in Realm Royale or even in Fortnite or even in PUBG, you can go and get shot at and then still have somewhat of a chance if you're near something to do it. But I'm like, no, you get spotted in H1Z1, you're two tapped and done from half a mile away, and you didn't even see the fucking guy to begin with. So it's just like, yeah, yeah. that's that's the other thing too. Like I'm like, how are these people shooting me from so far away, dude? Like they'll shoot you from miles away. I can barely see them, and they're two tapping me. Yeah, like, what? It's 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 insane. Um, so they also had like a couple stuff that's coming out this or we got uh, actually a release dates for so we had a, a bunch of stuff coverage on e3 um Sekiro shadows die twice got an official release date in march uh, of 2019 so that's really cool um devil may cry 5 also got a march release date which is kind of weird because like so we're gonna have this big rush in october november we're gonna have a slow month in december to kind of let everybody settle on the games that all came out in the next three months and then starting in february like January will also be kind of slow. There's a couple games coming out there, but in February and March is also another huge like game rush. So you're gonna have all these games coming out within like a six month period. Nobody's gonna have enough time to play them all. Especially people like me. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna buy like half of these and I'll be like I can't I can't play more. Yeah, because like twice. Battlefield Five open beta comes around the same time as like the Destiny next like next expansion. You know what I mean? Like it's just. It's just like bang, bang, bang. Like there's all this stuff coming out. Oh yeah, like like this year is uh, even, and that was another thing too. Like even Battlefield Five is kind of struggling because it's coming out in the midst of all these big titles this year. And it, I don't know what it is with EA and planning their their titles like this too. They've been doing it where they keep trying to heavily it compete with everything. Depends on which article you read. If you read some maybe more sensitive people's articles, it's because social justice warriors are winning, and that's why their sales are down because of the woman thing. Oh God. I don't even understand why they they even said they even said they're like we're not trying to go for accuracy complete and 100 percent accuracy here although most of this is historically accurate to begin with you guys are just (laughs) yeah but it's also a video game it's like come on guys i mean even like i think the executive producers came out and we were like we're just gonna just shut up basically just shut up was like the 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 general consensus of it was kind of interesting well it's like the doom thing right like last week we're like the Doom trailer has some funny jokes in there, kind of, like, making fun of sensitivity. But, like, demons are an offensive term, so, like, you should call them, uh, what is it, mortally challenged. And mortally like, challenged? Again, social justice warriors lost their minds. So, like, why are they making fun of this? Oh, God. Like, they're demons, man. Come on. Like, yeah, how are you going to make someone... I don't someone... really know if you can call those people social justice warriors, dude. If they're complaining but, about a video game, what, they're that's... just bitches. But the main articles, like there's Peter way bigger Seth, problems writing it up, saying that they're social justice warriors in a fucking video game. That's, those are fucking know. trolls, dude, straight up. But the <laughs> those are trolls. Are branding them as SJWs, that's the problem. Like I get their trolls, and that their voice doesn't matter. But like magazines are publishing articles, being like SJWs upset. 
it's like ah oh, here we go oh god that, well, that that's the pro that's part of the problem there too but well that's that's yeah, something like, for another well, time they're giving it too much attention but anyway yeah so uh on top of that we did talk about a little bit of the the battlefield open beta actually starting on the same day is or the day before actually i take that back the day before uh destiny's 2 forsaken dlc comes out which is coming up september 6th uh, the Destiny 2 expansion is coming out on the 7th. And that's going to be a lot of stuff in one di one week, too, I think. Um, another really yeah, yeah. cool cool thing that I just we saw an article on is um, Xbox is releasing a program called All Xbox All Access. So basically, it's going to be offering a subscription program that's going to allow you to buy an Xbox. And you get a choice of the Xbox One S or the Xbox One X, which is the 4K equivalent version. Um, you can still do 4K video and stuff on the S, but it doesn't play 4K games, but the Xbox One X does. Um, basically, it's... So that's different than the different, like, the actual Xbox One. The S is different, right? Yeah, the S is the regular, basically the equivalent of the regular Xbox now. And then they, you can watch like 4K stuff. You can watch 4K video on it. But then yeah, the Xbox like One X does 4K everything. Like, you can play the games, you can watch the videos, you can do everything. And it's all right, all right. way more powerful of a console. Yeah, I have an Xbox One X. It's, it's the equivalent. Like, what the fuck yeah, it's the equivalent of like the PS4 and the PS4 Pro. It's like really that's the only that's the difference between them two. Um, but they're, it's kind of cool. So the 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 S version is going to be twenty two dollars a month. It's also going to include um, the Xbox Game Pass and Xbox Live for twenty two dollars a month. Basically, buying your console throughout the whole time. And then the other one is thirty five dollars for the Xbox One X with the same thing with Xbox Live and the Xbox Game Pass. So you get a bunch, you get the console and a bunch of games that you could download and not have to worry about it all for 35 bucks a month for, I think it's the duration of a year or two years. So when you cancel, do you have to like send back the fucking Xbox or Well, what? it's the equivalent of like, like your phone leasing program. Oh, okay. It's yeah, like, you, it. you basically pay that money a month for, I think up to two years. Yeah. For two years. And it, include, like, and it includes, and it includes the service. Yeah, and it serves and it serves like the the live service and uh, the Game Pass for that two years you have it too. So it's actually a pretty good deal, I think, for people that are trying to get into an Xbox One and don't want to pay, you know, the the two two hundred thirty dollars for the Xbox One S, then another ten dollars a month for the Game Pass, and then another sixty dollars a year on top of that for Xbox Live. So now you just get it for a flat rate and you have all this stuff right available to you. So I thought that was kind of cool. And they're really beefing up. Deal. No, like that's a fantastic deal. In fact, if I had that deal, like I, I would have done that over buying. Think the about how street. much like Steam gets you for every time there's a Steam sale and all the stupid games you buy, all the money you spend, and you never play them. Yeah, right. If I could just pay thirty five dollars a month. I'd probably save money. Oh, dude. Yeah, by a long shot. And like, and they're releasing tons of games every month on the Xbox Game Pass too. So it's not like you're never really gonna get bored of that content. Not for a long time either, because there's even MMOs included on that too, and. The Game Pass also works on PC titles as well, so I mean, it's kind of a double win there. So at the end of the day, Xbox is like going to a more futuristic model of things that work for people, and trying to promote crossplay. What's Sony doing again? Uh, hoarding all their money and being like fucking Smeagol in the corner. That's what they're doing. It's my ball. I'm taking it and I'm going home. <laughs> exactly. That's that's exactly what they're doing. So let's get into that. This back into this like battle royale. And how not to do Battle Royale, it seems like. Because, like, all these fucking companies seem to be coming out and doing it. So the reason that start, that kind of started this co this topic for me, especially today, was this week. I, I play a game, another game, called Battle Right. And I play it occasionally. It's, it's a good, great um, game to jump right into. Xbox doing work with these... Oh, sorry, I didn't see this. Xbox doing work with these pro-consumer initiatives. Sony's, oh, yeah, definitely. I 100% agree, Captain. I definitely 100% agree. <laughs> um... But going back to this, so Battle Right, they're releasing a Battle Right Royale, which is going to be its own, a standalone game, separate, just kind of like how um, Paladins and Realm Royale became as two two separate games. But the difference is, like, the Battle Right Royale is going to have all the characters from the main game, and it's heroes, actual heroes against each other kind of thing. The thing that's kind of, that really pissed me off about it is that they're going to be charging for it. And it's 20 bucks. I mean, it's a little cheaper than most, but it's 20 bucks. But then you get founders and people who own their ultimate um, ultimate fan bundle are going to get a ten dollar discount. So it's like, but still, like I'm I'm at this point of like, why the fuck? Excuse my French. Why the fuck are these companies charging for battle royales when they're struggling to keep them open because they're just the battle royale? Like, okay, I get it. Like, if you want to do the battle royale, 
like, and we were talking about this a little bit earlier, why don't you have your base game and your base, you know, meat and potatoes of the game still be there and then have, have that as an uh, extra mode instead of these companies getting like really greedy and going after a $20 price tag for people that have never want to play it. Like you're already going to cut off half of your fan base right there. And you're only going, you're going to be only feeding off of your fan base, especially in this case of better way out or better right. Like what the hell? <laughs> I think, uh, like, I don't know, it's weird because, like, I think people are getting kind of tired of Battle Royale and not because it's, like, not cool. It's because everybody keeps reiterating the same thing over and over. Like, okay, so uh, Realm Royale came out and it was super popular there for a few weeks. But, like, if you look at their numbers now, the game is dying. Like, nobody's fucking playing it anymore, dude. Dude, on which one? Sick of battle royales, man. It's the same oh, um, thing. Yeah. Realm Royale, and that's a free-to-play game. You know what I'm saying? Like they're actually doing that one right. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, so I don't know, man. I don't know. I think these companies are just like they all jump on a bandwagon, and then who, who knows, man? Who who knows what's gonna happen? But these companies will sell their games, and you know, like like Battlefield and and like Call of Duty, they you know those are those will sell because people are gonna buy those no matter what. But well, it's harder to sell on those is a side project, right? Exactly. Like it's but it's like game. yeah, exactly. But it's hard enough to like try and take on contenders like Fortnite and PUBG when you're kind of just implementing a very very similar formula, uh, you know, even in a free to play market. So when you are charging for these things it's kind of like I, I don't understand it either like how are you supposed to pull in a like yeah i don't get it man I, I, well, the thing that confuses me the most especially about the battle right thing is their main game is free to play like what the hell <laughs> how do they go yeah, to, right? to have a free to play <laughs> yeah. game and they're like all right guys we're gonna bring on another game but we're gonna charge you this time for it like okay if it were the same thing i would 100 percent agree if it, it released in the same model as Battle Right. So Battle Right, you know, you get the game and you and it's just like kind of like League of Legends and stuff like that. You have to buy the heroes. You could earn the in-game credits to buy the heroes or you could buy like the ultimate, you know, uh, Founders Pack or the ultimate fan pack and get all the heroes and, you know, future update and future heroes and stuff like that too. Kind of like how I think it's Paladins that does the same thing. But then, but they're, not, but they're not even doing that. They're charging you 20 bucks right off the bat to get it as an initial thing and they're giving discounts to people who own the other stuff which i mean i guess it's nice of them but at the same time it's like why are you even charging for this to begin with and it's just, know, yeah battle royales are eventually not going to be a thing like well, although, not i think they could be though like if people would like so here's what i've been waiting for i've been waiting well, for somebody to come out with a battle royale that is a persistent universe so like when you do a match you do things, you gain items, you do different shit, and what you do in that match is going to affect you the next time you play a match. You know what I'm sure, saying? But they're, they're, like, Battle Royales as they exist now are not going to stay around. No, no. Yeah, it's, it's already a dying breed of games. The same thing. The fog is moving in. The gas is moving in. The storm is moving. You know, it's just... Yeah, it, they need to do something else. And Captain, you're 100 percent right. It's it's really dumb. It's like I I was hyped the same thing for Battle Royale because it was I thought it was going to come out as a free to play tile because their main game is a free to play tile. But it's already a niche game that's going to already you know like you said you're already capping it at their launch and it's like what the hell are you guys doing? Like you guys know what works for even you. Like why the fuck are you going to change that or try to change that and try to charge for a Battle Royale be, Battle Royale because a couple other people did no be the you know be some of the people that change that that route. And do that, especially well, since we're like a small those, developer. It's not like those other games, like, uh, what do you call it? Islands of the Nine isn't even doing that good. Well, yeah, that was Nine our next talk. Yeah, like, Islands of Nine just released a big um, a big early access and beyond, like, thing. And one of the biggest things they, they talk about, I'll put it here in chat, is um, how their players are genuinely concerned now that the game is dying. Like, games can't even fill up anymore. And, like, I, I mean, what has it been? Only two, three weeks since we played DC? And it was yeah, uh, it were full games like, then. And that the was game like the just launch. launched, dude. It just well, came out. You know? Shroud was playing it for a while, like before you and I started playing it, RSG. Like it was out kind of like on the sidelines. It's not like just out, but like it kind of hit the big time there, like maybe two, three weeks ago. And now it's already dead. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, and it's a far, far better game than even uh, PUBG, I think, to some degree, because it's simpler for one. But the problem is, I think it's too simple for most people. And the, I mean, the gunplay is probably the best in any of the as in it's terms of. It's got good gunplay. You're not picking up stupid pistols. 
Like, you can hit anywhere on the map. Like, it's just a better game. Yeah. And I really like the system where you pick up separate types of armor because body, you know, different hitting different body parts actually makes a difference. Like you're gonna get it's different damage depending on where you hit in your body, and you buy you get you pick up armor for specific parts of your body too, which is kind of cool. Yeah, it was kind of like had a, a dumbed down Tarkov feel to it, like with the bullet impacts and stuff like that, but still had battle royale, simplified guns. Like really, it was like the Call of Duty of battle royales, or CS:GO of battle royales, really, because it played a lot more like CS:GO than anything. But just that simplified version, right? Oh, like yeah, yeah. Simple, and, like, you run around. It was like that, and you'd think, like, the formula there was right. It should have worked. Yeah, yeah. And it, But that but that was also the same thing. I think the reason why it's dying is because nobody wants to pay $30 for a game that's already dying now. Like, if it were a yeah, free-to-play game, think, people would pick I up... Think part of, I think part of the problem, seriously, too, is that these games are so, so similar. Like, there's... An, like, so here's the deal. They're trying to come out... They, they, they use the exact same formula... In every single on one it. of these games, they put a new skin on it, and then, like, people go and play it, and even if the gameplay is good and stuff, they already have a Battle Royale game that they're familiar with, and people will gravitate towards what they're familiar with, unless that something new has something that's, like, unique and fucking really entertaining to, to do, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. well, what's the point of trying to... something new when you've already invested a bunch of time into something else that's basically the same thing? You yeah, know? it kind of boils down to like if you're gonna p pay money for a battle royale, it better be a side project of an already existing game. Absolutely, I agree with like, that. You need to sure. have a core game, like a single player or something, some sort of campaign or something you can do offline that's worth spending that money for. And then the battle royale is an addition. If you're gonna release a battle royale as the only thing in that game and charge money, you're fucked. Yeah, yeah, it's and it, it's just, I think even even for um. Islands of Nine, I think it's a fantastic game, but the the price tag of thirty bucks, like we got we got cop review copies for free, and that was still like a better deal than than. I, I would have never, I would have never paid thirty dollars for that. Never. No, nope. I almost thought about getting in. I was like, nah, it's just another battle royale. Fuck that. I ain't and that's for it, and dude. that's the same thing that everybody's gonna start thinking now, especially with any of these other battle royales. Like, why are you gonna go and spend any extra money on a battle royale when you've already got the same the same if not better experience for games you already own or even some of the free-to-play ones where you could just pick it up for free and not have to deal with anything else you know it's just yeah, no yeah. Reason. it's it's crazy it's crazy like a lot the islands of nine things sounded really hopeful but the problem is is they're they already got a big paywall in front of their audience and they're already charging for skins like okay you guys needed to pick one or the other not release skins and release a paid game with you know with updates or, or make it free to play for your game look at csgo it's like what six bucks eight bucks for that fucking game and then you buy keys for crates like you're not charging thirty dollars like someone will pay like up to ten dollars for a shitty game that's like i, mean, I paid that's like the price range. for csgo it was only like maybe a couple of years ago but i mean well, now, i think it's right? 15, like, if yeah. you're trying to if you're trying to stay competitive or whatever like people will pay like up to ten dollars like i'll pay ten dollars for a shit game but as soon as it's thirty dollars yeah just to check it out yeah it's like no, yeah, you start like, getting no. into 20 30 bucks i'm like nah and so if you want to do this. if you want to do both you got to lower your initial cost and then charge for skins you can't charge 30 dollars and then charge for skins yeah that's and that's the problem too and yet golfers play the same to him came every week so hey, at least they could go to different places is, like they have heroes and stuff right they should have done something to where like like there's an in-game currency and you can grind and get the currency and unlock the characters or they could offer like a a, a package where you can have them all at once that you pay for you know what i'm saying well that, that's what, like, like that's what they're giving like you initially that. now like, with awesome. with that purchase you're getting all the heroes at once but they're forcing you to get all the heroes at once basically right there's no like in-game capacity to no. to get all the characters if you grind for them and yeah, yeah, no, it's like, it's just like I feel like that's a good free to play model, kind of like how Paladins is, and mm -hmm. like uh, Quake Champions is kind of the same. Well, even even the base kind of... the base battle rights like that too. If you don't want to pay, you don't want to buy the hero pack, you could go and just play for him basically. Right. And just use the free the free rotation heroes just to do that, right? right. Which isn't bad yep. either. I like that that uh, thing. You could be my oh god, quoting oh. Agri an Enrique Iglesias uh, thing too. Yeah, I actually, I like that. I like that free-to-play model, dude, you know? Because it's, like, it's fair, you know? Like, if you want to pay for it and get all the stuff, you can. Like, I did that with Paladins because I knew I was going to play it a lot, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I just wanted to have 
champions and well, shit. Well, even that, I still got to play the new hero. But I actually looked at it to. yesterday. Like, you could just grind it and, and unlock them as you go, you mm -hmm. know? And there's some people that, that are perfectly fine just playing the game and earning it because it gives them a sense of accomplishment for that, too, which is not a bad thing either. Or, like, I mean, same thing with the Battle Royale. It should have been... It so should have been like that too, especially because you could, if you played the battle royale and give you another way to earn, especially if you did really well in the battle royale, like give you currency to help you buy your main heroes for the main battle right game, so you could go play more of the main battle right game too. They're not doing themselves any favors by splitting the goddamn game up either. Yeah, nobody's coming out with any real like new and creative ideas in the battle royale market. You know, it's no. all the same. It's all the same well, formula. Back to what there we were was saying. one thing that. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I, like before I, I kind of about I kind of jumped all on you. Though. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. Um, if you guys remember, uh, what was that? The name of it? Cheesy eighties fucking battle royale. Oh, like Radical Heights. Radical Heights. That's the one. There was a mechanic inside of that game that I thought was really cool and unique, and would have would have been a really cool feature in any battle royale game, where you collected money as you went. You know what I'm saying? And that money stayed in your bank account. So, like, when you dropped into a match again, you could run up to one of the machines and buy weapons because you had cash in your fucking ATM or whatever. Yeah, and that was a really cool feature. That's and a unique thing and something to where it's like when you play a Battle Royale game, it's not just a one-off thing. Like, you're actually doing something, and the things that you do when you're playing it are going to help you or hurt you when you play it later you know no. what i mean like that's something that gives it more playability it's unique you know but nobody's doing that they're all just doing the fucking there's a fog moving in you drop in you pick up weapons everybody gets closer to each other one person wins it's the same formula over and over and there's like so much potential for it to have more you know yeah and nobody's really what thinking I mean, outside like, the we, box we touched on it earlier right like big battle royales are probably like if they exist in the future they're going to be vastly different like they're going to have to change up the formula because they're already struggling like crazy. Yeah, and and, and I mean with Fortnite just you only dominating get the market. One map too, you know that's the other thing. Like you get what, you, so you're doing the same thing every single time. Well, it's like, because a lot of a lot of these companies are thinking that the one map is the way to go because they then you know, they look at it from two angles. Now you look at Fortnite has always only, only had one map, but it's an evolving map. It changes uh, every season. But then you have PUBG where they're releasing more maps and more content for those maps specifically, like separate from each other too. So yeah, like now they're like, that's a bad example because like well, that game but that's is such a failure. that's the two examples you get though, like with the big like juggernauts of PUBG or of Battle Royales. Like you either go Fortnite, you have the one map and an evolving map, or you have the one with multiple maps, but it's the only two that are actually really surviving. I mean, they're the only two that are really doing anything in terms of numbers and viewership on, especially on Twitch or, or Mixer. And yeah, here you go, you're stuck with it basically. So now there's your lead, two leading examples. Now they're like, okay, so one's paid, so maybe we could try to do that because they're succeeding with it. Well, no, that's different because that game's been out a lot longer. Then you go the free-to-play route. All right, cool. Now we've got this, and they're doing all these things with cosmetics. Now you're like, all right, cool. Now do I try that? Uh, no, nah, well, I don't think we could survive on that topic, or we not we might not make enough money off of our cosmetics, or we can't crank them out like anybody else can. You know, I think also, too, like, part of the reason why Fortnite is just being so successful, because um, they are kind of providing those things. It's like you said, like, they don't have different maps, but the map evolves and it changes. So, like, it keeps it fresh a little bit. And then they have, like, the, the limited time game modes that come out that are, like, unique and a little bit different than the regular Battle Royale. I feel like other games need need something like that, too, where it's, like, Maybe you drop in, but then there's a different objective that you you and your team have to do to win. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. There's there's more potential for it, but everybody just keeps doing the same thing. And you know why are you gonna go and, and do something on a game that you you're like, oh shit, I'm a noob at this game, but it's the same as this other game that I'm already good at. Yeah, yeah. And th and that's the thing. I think that's where where even Dying Light Bad Blood changes that up. And also, I think it's actually releasing as a founders pack on e early access. So I think it is there is a paywall in front of that captain. I forgot about the Founders Pack thing that they're coming out with. Um, I don't, so I don't know if it's free and then you can buy the Founders Pack to have extra stuff or it's just by paywall Founders Pack. But what I was getting at with Dying Light Bad Blood, it's not just the same thing. Like you get, you jump in and you have an objective that's not to kill the other players. It's you and 12 players or 11 other players and you're trying to get these samples to get to secure yourself one seat on the helicopter that'll get you out, there, out of there with the samples. But you have to have those samples to get on it. So you have to go collect this stuff. See, so that sounds kind of fun, though. That yeah. Wait, oh, what it was is. That game where you were on the island in teams and you had like an artifact. Oh, SOS. 
that was fit. That what that was yeah, and then they changed it to a shitty battle royale and took the entire formula that made that game popular away. And all the founders basically raged and fucking started suing him because the the, the product wasn't as described anymore with what they bought into. So, so they, that is what so, that game. so like here's you don't another hear thing. That anymore. So here's another thing too that that I don't understand why nobody's really done it yet. Um, H1Z1, I guess, kind of a little bit did with their like because the things would come in and drop napalm on like the the crates and stuff or whatever. Mm -hmm. But like, so the whole entire battle royale genre kind of came from the movie The Hunger Games, right? Like that's where the idea no. seems to have kind of come from. No, no, no. The original, it the original thing came from bat battle royale, which was the Japanese movie. At, like what was it? Uh, the Culling. Is the Culling copied uh, Hunger Games? Which Hunger Games, and like that's where most but, people first remember that shit. And then Hunger right. Games, Hunger Games copied an original Japanese movie called Battle Royale, which okay. which so, was but, like. But anyways, like regardless, um, the one thing that I that they don't seem to be putting into Battle Royale games, which would probably make a pretty fun game, is um, natural hazards. You know, like you have the fog that moves in and shit. But remember, like in the Hunger Games, there was like crazy shit that would happen occasionally, mm. and. All of a sudden, they would have to run from some toxic fucking bad and, and that's that's Spectator where sponsors. that's Can where the culling, the original culling, dope. excelled because you can. There was actually games, uh, and it was random too. Some games you could actually have like an environmental hazard happen where you could fuck you could everybody else. Your own yeah, view. like if you went yeah. to like the gas stations, oh. you could activate them. You know what? Uh, I think Darwin Project actually does that a little bit too. Oh yeah, with the with the show host. Yeah, the show host could fuck everybody. He could go to somebody and be like, oh, you're doing too good. Let me go and, like, give you a negative modifier or help this person yeah, yeah. or do something I'm, else I'm like actually, that. actually, yeah, I'm quite surprised that that game isn't more popular, dude, because it's really fun and it's pretty unique, especially in the Battle Royale kind of market. Dude. But it, like, it started... It's completely different. Than it, the started, it started in these, is the same thing. It had a paywall. I mean, it wasn't a very big paywall. It was 15 bucks, but then they made it free to right. play, and by that point, yeah, it was... free to play, yeah. Yeah, and at that point, it made it... It, it finally changed you know, the minds of some people, but I think it was too little too late when they did that, finally. So it didn't really help the game grow much after that either. It kind of just kind of stayed the same. A few more people checked it out. Like they had a little spike when it went free to play and then that was it pretty much. Yeah, so. and that's kind of unfortunate too because they have a really cool thing with uh, like chat, Twitch chat integration and stuff too mm -hmm. where pe people can vote for different things and, and shit like that where like the people watching can, can have an effect on the game. Uh, it's a really cool game and a unique idea. It's not, it's just, uh, yeah, that one's fallen by the wayside too, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's really, it's really 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 weird so moving on to uh our last couple of big topics today because it's it's gonna kind of like this is kind of those stuff that's been happening that's really weird this week um first off we we had so this happened actually and I, I wanted to share this only because it happened so near to me um was a csgo youtuber mcskillet uh, happened to pass away this week in a i what appeared in all indications appeared to be a suicide because he bought a brand new mclaren or close to a brand new mclaren to him and drove it on the wrong side of the freeway and killed the family. And it happened to be like literally like on the same exit where I get out to go to work or leave from work. And it happened that like 20 minutes before I got out of work. Are and they calling it an apparent suicide? This article is not, but the local articles are. That sounds crazy. Because there's like, the, 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 all the... all say, that's a straight up dick fucking move, bro. No, Kill yourself only, on your own time. Don't take a whole family out with you. Yeah, and that was the problem because like all the exits that he could have got on the freeway to do this in the first place, there is no way you can tell that, the, you know, by accident get on the wrong side of the freeway. There is no fucking way. Because they're all like roundabout that things that have long terms. If you're like from England and you're in the States and you're like, get confused that you're on the wrong side of the road. You know no. what I mean? Like, and he's from here. There. He's from here. That's what I mean, like, that's what I'm saying. So, but I don't, like, side, I don't necessarily know if it had to be a suicide. Like, you could just be driving down the wrong side of the road because you're a fucking asshole. The right? only thing, the, the only thing it could have done is it, that's the only way it could have went out. But he was also battling with depression and a few other things. And he would go out and like basically blow up, you know, or well, not blow up, but he would go out and spend money on random things and say he's having a problem then he wouldn't sh you know he wouldn't show up to shows or he wouldn't do any new videos for like a week or two at a time so it was a lot of weird stuff around this and they shut the freeway down actually for like almost two and a half hours just trying to investigate this whole thing because of you know i mean obviously there's a lot of stuff to go through but they they really had it locked down to do all this it was just crazy like how this all turned out um that day but yeah it's just weird and it just happened to be a big or bigger um CSGO YouTuber, so it's just really weird. Like, kind of just a, a freak thing that, you know, you know, never hear of something happen like this. Yeah, wasn't he, like, a pro player or something like that? 
apparently. Yeah. 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 yeah, he was a pro player. I don't know. I remember what team he was on. I've I've known of Nick Skillet for quite a while. He's been around for a while, but he was only like 18 or 19. He was really young. Yeah, so you're just saying there's an opening on a new team. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> rude. <laughs> Fucking rude. Uh. <laughs> On lighter news, on lighter news, we're finally, everybody's kind of excited. We've had this drought of video cards, which really haven't needed anything, but NVIDIA finally announced their new RTX series, 2000 series video cards. Now, the thing that kind of really came that was really weird about this was the fact that they didn't release anything aside of specs, but in terms of like card over card comparison, which is really a, a staple thing that NVIDIA has always done when they released their new line of video cards. And they also kind of went this weird, weird route where instead of going, you know, in the 100 series above it, so you know what, went from like the 8 series, 9 series, 10 series, now it's jumping to the 2000 series, and you're like, kind of like, what? Um, why? Where? What happened to the 1100 series? I think it's so, just a marketing technique to make you think it's that much better when it's probably like a little bit Maybe. Better. I mean, it, it, but they don't even go over like the thing like, oh, it's going to be like X percent better than the previous year models and kind of stuff like this, but they kind of did some weird switch up. So, um, and I got clarity on this from actually a YouTuber I watch called J2Sense and he, he does a lot of really good hardware reviews and stuff like that. If you guys haven't checked them out, definitely do so. Worth it if you like really listening to hardware reviews and hardware like top inside stuff. But so how the 10 series came out, we had the 10, the 1070 and the 1080 and then the, the Titan XP with the big P. <laughs> I didn't realize there was a difference because there was a Titan XP was the Pascal all architecture they did that and then they released the 1080 ti later so what they're doing is they're taking what would have been the titan series is going to be now the ti series it's launching all at once with it's the 1070 or the 2070 2080 and 2080 ti launching at, at once with the titan price tag so normally the 1080 ti is usually eight to nine hundred bucks nine maybe 950 on the on the high end but now it's launching at 1200 bucks which is what the titan was launched at so they're kind of doing this like weird little shuffle around to do all this, but the getting to the point of where it was weird is they didn't do year over year performance things. They didn't show anything better, and all the stuff that all the stuff they showed at the conference uh, with the ray tracing thing on that looked really nice. Nobody was getting over thirty frames a second. Now, granted, that's that's on beta drivers or not mature drivers on a game that's not even out yet. So it's. It was kind of weird to see all that at once. So it'll be interesting to see once they release that, but that's You're coming out. You're going to have to wait for all the benchmark testing to yeah. actually see. Like, until then, like, there's no, there's not even a real point to talk about like, new graphics drivers until there's benchmarking and, like, actual data. It's like, I could, re re like, release a turd in a box and be like, here's this new graphics driver. But until you actually test it, like... Yeah, I, I, but that was weird because usually they when they release or announce these new graphics cards, they usually give something in, in terms of like what we're going to be looking forward and, to in terms Nvidia of Nvidia also usually teases the shit out of it for a while. This mm -hmm. is like weird that they're just like, okay, these are coming and like it's coming quick. Yeah, and yeah, and it's like less than a month, not two months or three months out like they usually do. So it like the whole thing is just really odd and different for them. I don't know if that's if them just trying to change it up or or what they're really. Thing is for they're this. being bought out by mad cats and they're trying to do a quick cash grab oh jesus i don't even know but i mean they do they did some cool redesigns on the cards themselves to actually improve cooling so cooling's not going to be shit on the founders edition cards which is going to be a great thing um because that was a big issue with the 1080 founders right yeah the 1080 founders and the 1080 ti founders all and 1070 even founders all of them had really bad heat problems at first yeah because it would start throttling randomly mm -hmm. yeah i remember that so that was that was kind of the thing with that, and I'm I'm really curious. Like I'm always one of those guys that goes out and buys the new new card, especially when the 1080 series or uh, Ti series comes out, because I always like the Ti. Like I do a 1080 Ti now, and I want the 2080 Ti, but I want to see what happens like in terms of performance, and I also want to wait for the the water cooling um, solutions for them, like the hybrids and stuff, like the closed loop water cooling solutions. So that should be a lot of fun. Um, well, I don't know. The cryptocurrency bubble has pretty much popped, and uh, it's kind of affordable to buy graphics cards again. Oh yeah, it's, to yeah, it's, it's was totally stupid, worth. Man. I'm I'm happy that's over. I'm super happy that's Me over. You too. Hey, another thing too you should probably should probably be mentioned. There's probably a lot of people that like invested in graphics cards because of the fucking cryptocurrency boom, and now they're like, well, what are we gonna do with this? And so if you keep an eye out, you might be able to buy one. 
uh, from somebody who thought they were going to do mining with it and uh, get a really good deal on it too, man. Yeah, I would it's keep just an been eye out sitting there not making them any money, and they're like, "Fuck this thing." Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm telling you, dude, they're going to be out there for grabs. Have, like, <laughs> that, man, because people were buying. Man, I remember playing like I can't. Remember, I was playing a game of CS:GO, going. Some guy was like, "Man, I just bought 20 graphics cards. You make so much money." What I was the like, fuck? "What the fuck, bro? <laughs> that shit is going to backfire on you so hard." Yeah, Jeez. but if you keep an eye out, I bet you, you find some cheap ones up for grabs. And just in general, it's it's like it's like now you can build a PC for cheaper than buying a pre-made one, which like for well, for a little while there with this cryptocurrency fucking Yeah, it was bubble, the other way around. It was, around. Like, it was, like, it was the other way around, which was super weird because it's never been that way. Yeah. I mean, like I don't think too many people prefer buying pre-builds anymore like no. even people that don't really know much about a computer like you can build your own pc very easily well even even like so there was a little point aside of the graphics card thing there was a pro weird point where pre builds were becoming cheaper than pc or custom builds with the exact same parts like you know msi all the major name brand stuff in there and you would buy it for like 150 200 cheaper like in fact i bought a stream machine at the time and it was before the big bubble happened with all the cryptocurrency stuff but that pre-built, if I wanted to build that same pre-built, it was three hundred and fifty dollars more for the same yeah, exact the stream, thing. The stream PC doesn't even need a graphics card. You just need like a half decent. Processor. Oh no, I mean, I mean, it did. I, I put, I, I had a different one. I put it, I had it with a ten sixty six gig card, but still, it was like three hundred fifty dollars cheaper just based on some of the hardware markups. Like I was thinking about even getting a capture card and just using my laptop as like my. I have like an Asus Monster, like it's a ridiculous gaming laptop, but I never use it. I'm like, man, I'll just stream off of it. There you go. So that I could be some off of a fucking MacBook Pro using GE Force now. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> although well, it's, I, it's definitely not an ideal setup, but it actually does work. It works pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. So one of our uh, last two topics of today, like the KSI and Logan Paul thing, happened yesterday, and man, that was uh, that was a shit show all on its own. I don't even uh, want to get involved <laughs> with this, but I need another drink of pop, so I'll be right back. <laughs> so it was a ten dollar YouTube fight like a boxing match between all these different YouTubers, which I thought was hilarious because I thought it was just the one fight, but it was like six fights or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was like a boxing pay-per-view event on, yeah. <laughs> on fucking YouTube. <laughs> yeah, with like some random fucking YouTubers who aren't even fighters. They're so, like... <laughs> yeah, they, they had over, like something over like fucking like four or five hundred streams of it yesterday going up on Twitch for free. And people were like, yeah, just donate, you know, donate or do this or something or another. And it was on Twitch. It was on Periscope. It was on all these different apps, like watching it for free for people that had paid to watch it. And it was just hilarious in how many things were going on. And then, of course, the ending yeah, was and it's not it's actually kind of an issue, which we could probably look in the future or look to in the future for like for Twitch and other companies to try and do something about. Because like there's people that are also just like, um, randomly streaming movies on twitch mm -hmm. which like is against their terms of service <laughs> yeah totally against terms of service but there's like but but it's always like a small channel you know mm -hmm. i found this article the other day where these guys like promote small channels you know where they're like you can go to this website and it'll uh it gives you a whole listing of people who are streaming that have like two viewers or less right mm -hmm. and and so, like, the article was talking about how, like, some of them he went to and they're super weird. Some of them were uh, people that were, like, legit trying to stream and seem like they had good content. There's, you know, nobody's found them. Uh, and then he was saying that, like, a vast majority of the ones that they would go to were, like, people just streaming movies and shit. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty. That one's pretty crazy. But yeah, there, there were so many people watching it. I mean, I think even in uh, this article here, this Polygon article, they sh like the top three people with like it was over a million viewers in just that alone, in just those five or six uh, channels that they linked there. It's just crazy and how how much. Yeah, that article said that they ended up like that's a big loss too. Like if you're mm -hmm. charging people ten bucks for the thing and a bunch of people are watching, they, they're saying they estimated they lost like four million dollars or some shit like that, dude. Yeah, something yeah. like that. It was just crazy. Yeah, it's all there in that article I just posted in the chat. But that's just wild, dude. And plus, of course, the last the big highlight of the whole thing turned out to be a draw, so they could announce a rematch. I mean, it was a pretty interesting fight. Like I watched the whole thing, all six rounds. And the first two rounds, Logan Paul had it because he just had the reach advantage on him. Like, he had just really insane reach advantage on him. 
Were they boxing with gloves? Or yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like full-on okay. boxing. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. they had the whole get-ups and everything for it. Were they like boxing gloves or were they like MMA type? Uh, no, no, no. Boxing. Yeah, like actual full boxing like gloves. Boxing. And then they had the so, boxing headgear on, of course, to protect the pretty faces because they're YouTubers. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, it was just really funny. And then, and then it started catching on where KSI was really catching up later because he just had the endurance, and Logan Paul just did not have the endurance for later later rounds. So they won the rounds like three to three. I feel like there's a lot of people out there that would like take a swing at Logan Paul or Jake Paul. Right, and they just finally made enough beef between each other because they're big YouTubers, and finally got to do it. Because it's been like this has been like in the making for like I don't know six or seven months now. At least they've been fighting and feuding for a while now over on YouTube. So it's just weird. Um, so that thing finally happened. I mean, still they made millions off of it. Each one of them made millions. It would have been of great it. if they like were slapping each other like girls, though. Like. Like they didn't know how to fight. Just get, just like, no, just just give, <laughs> just give him a, just give him a, uh, what is it called? Like the old college days. Uh, what was that movie with uh, Will Ferrell and Vince Vaughn and all of them, where they're they're like managing a frat place or whatever? Old school. Old school. Yeah. And they and just throw him in a, just throw him in a big ring of lube, and just let him go at it. <laughs> that would two sell. Two dudes in a uh, tub of lube. Yep, two dudes in the tub of lube. Um, like, sounds like a good going. time to me. So this one, there are our, our big top story of today is Twitch shutting down ad-free viewing, which this is pissed off a lot of people this week. Like a ton of people are mad about this because, like, for it got one, me when I turned into this channel. Yeah. I was like, God damn it. Yeah. So it's a, yeah. It's already, and I think it's starting a lot sooner than people thought too, because it's saying it's not going to take effect until September fourteenth. But now our people are already also reporting that they're seeing this, and I'm also seeing it in other channels when I'm supposed to be having ad-free viewing. The Still, thing that gets me is not only did they take away ad-free viewing, but the taking away the 20% discount on games. Yeah, so the yes, thing, like that's like a one-two combo punch. Like, hey, fuck you, and then extra fuck you. Like, yeah, it's not if like somebody was streaming a game and you bought it from their channel, you got a discount or something. Well, work? though that that's still there. That's rev that revenue no, sharing. That, so that's there for just like because they give you uh, you get discounts with Twitch Prime, right? On oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that's different. Yeah. So they the the buying games from the channels is a revenue sharing thing, but the Amazon it was like an Amazon Prime change with a Twitch Prime change. So the Twitch Prime change was taking away ad free viewing for everybody, and, and then reintroducing Turbo, which they killed last year, by the way. Yeah, because it sucked. Because it sucked, and they wanted to give it with Twitch Prime as this new initiative. Now they're taking that away, or that one feature that you really liked out of it, taking that away and reintroducing Turbo. And then on top of that, they're like, oh, by the way, we're going to change Amazon Prime too. You're not getting the 20% discount. Instead, we're going to give you a $10 credit. It would I'm be like, one thing if they were extending ad share, rev, uh, like ad revenue share to affiliates, but that's not. The case. Well, yeah, and then the, and that was a yeah. speculation because that's that was in their roadmap. It still is in their roadmap to give uh, affiliates ad re, uh, revenue. But I think ultimately what it came down to is all the investors and all these people that you know they paid to have their ads on Twitch aren't getting seen because now it was ad free for so long, and so many people have Twitch Prime or are investing in Twitch Prime just for that feature, and they're like, well, so guys, how are we gonna go and run Twitch now, or do our ads on your channel if you don't, if you do ad-free viewing for everybody that has Twitch Prime, which is everybody now, basically. Like, I don't know many people that don't have Twitch Prime these days, or Amazon Prime these days. The thing that kills me about the ad-free, like, bringing ads in now is like, I don't know how many times, like, I'd check out, like, maybe a not such a big streamer, but if it wasn't something I really wanted to watch, as soon as an ad started, I'd be like, nah, not worth it. And I would just yep, go gone. to a different channel. I was just yeah. like, I'm just it makes it a lot harder for smaller streamers. That's for yeah, that's a really great big point. time. Yeah, it's like that's if I click really on a channel that has like four viewers and maybe it's something like I just want to maybe see, but as soon as it's like thirty second ad and it's loading, I'm like, oh, I'll just like go to a channel I'm sub to and like not deal with it. Like, exactly, and that and that was the thing is like they're still giving you the ad free viewing with your subscription. But they're basically trying to drive you to buy more subscriptions now with all, especially with like the sub gifting and all that kind of stuff. I actually got hit with a random one the other day. They're not going to do that though. Like they're not going to do that on the level to help out, like to offset how much this is going to hurt the little guy. Yeah. No, no. And then everybody's like, well, I mean, ad blockers are coming back. But then even then before Turbo finally got killed and then the Twitch Prime ad free viewing came, like ad blockers were already stopping, like not working as well as they used to because they embedded into the Twitch player instead. Yeah, isn't that what they're doing now? Like, it just bypasses iBlock? Mm-hmm. 
And some of them even bypass some of the ad blocks, so that's going to be really I mean, interesting and frustrating. The thing that gets me, dude, is it's already super fucking profitable, man. Imagine all the millions of people who signed up for fucking Amazon Prime who were just Twitch users. They're like, hey, I can get this and get ad free viewing and stuff, right? And get to sub for free to somebody. Like, it's already super profitable. They're making a shitload of money just off of the the subscription revenue. Plus, they now it's time to dominate all the streamers. Got them Plus, they're all already making ad revenue, and now they're just like, well, yeah, you know, and, and they probably they, use a little bit more ad revenue. It should be noted that this is like one of the most profitable fucking companies, not just like today but like ever in human history it's gonna be getting <laughs> close to like rivaling google no like getting up there uh, Amazon? Yes. Oh, without a doubt without oh easily a doubt. well no they, in fact i think they're actually more profitable in terms of like company value they're actually ahead of them now yeah the only people ahead of them as far as like company value might be like fucking apple or you know some oil kind of oh google's worth a lot that. but like i don't know man yeah they, google's starting to break out a in trillion the Wait, Apple did. Yeah. Apple broke a trillion dollars in, uh, 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 what do you call Well, it? hook me up, Apple. I'll yeah. Give you extra dollars, you know what I mean? A give me that ad free viewing dollars. experience. <laughs> yeah. But that's what I mean, though. Like, Amazon's already super profitable, and they're still growing and getting even more profitable. Why the fuck they want to do something like this, you know? It's, like, completely anti-consumer. Yeah, oh, it's no. It's not like people are going to stop watching Twitch. They're just going to stick to the channels they know. Exactly, that's all that's gonna and, the, and it's gonna make and it's gonna bring the big, probably, make the big guys bigger and the small guys smaller. It's really all it's like, gonna do. I don't think everybody's like me, but I'm assuming a lot of people are probably like me. And like when they see an ad, they purposely like I mute it. I don't want to see what the fuck you're advertising. And if I have to sit there and watch your ad for thirty seconds, I remember your product is something not to buy. Well, that, that's the yeah, thing too. The like, only time I ever watch an ad is if it's for like a uh, like a preview of a game that I'm excited about. I'll be like, oh yeah, hey, let me check this out for a second. But other than that, I'm like, that's the, the only time I've gotten dude. tricked into watching one is like a movie trailer yep. or a game trailer. <laughs> yep, movie well, or game. Something that so I sometimes don't watch it. Watch so that's the other that. thing. Yeah. So people, you know, there's a lot of people that go out there and will occasionally wa forcefully watch an ad to get bits. Like, ad watching for bits hasn't been a thing in the last couple weeks because it always says try again later. I've been trying no shit for three weeks now to try to get free bits to be able to support my friends and stuff like that, I and I cannot able be able to. Yeah, but I haven't been able to watch uh, ads for bits in months, dude. And uh, also, it should be noted, like, I mean, I'm a small streamer, but I was getting, like, probably a couple hundred bucks a month just in bits, and uh, I didn't even make enough in the last 30 days <laughs> Uh, to clear the hundred dollar threshold that Twitch makes you get for uh, yeah, so it must, it must yeah. like a random thing because like this guy in chat saying like his bits are working fine, so I'm guessing it's just like a Twitch glitch where like like some I, days I, I can't create clips, you know what I mean, and that went forever. I'm just I'm assuming bits is probably the same. Yeah, I, and maybe it's different per user, but I haven't been able to do it for almost three weeks now. Easy. Uh, they say it's based on location, but I literally haven't been able to watch uh, ads for bits in months, dude. I mean, we, li we live in the same my region bit, too. My bit revenue, my bit revenue on my stream, like it's not even it's non-existent anymore. So when I used like to get all these locational ads, I get French ads now because I'm too close to Quebec. So now I'm not even getting English ads, so I'm even more fucking mad because I can't even understand the ad. I'm in goddamn French. Jesus, dude. Jesus. Stupid spy tongue. Like, yeah. Just, I don't know. <laughs> Stupid spy tongue. Did you just say spy tongue? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we call it. Man. Oh, man. But yeah, no, that I I'm not really happy. Like the ad free viewing really was the biggest bonus that, it, and on top of that, the the game saving saving for 20 percent off was a better deal than getting ten bucks in credit. Now, granted, Absolutely. I do a similar thing with Voodoo where they, I if I pre order like movies I really want, they usually give me a three dollar credit to buy for the next movie. In that case, I know there's going to be other movies that are going to come out that I want to watch, so I could use that three dollar credit later. Now, granted, now you could do pre-order the games and get $10 credit, but I'm like, yeah, there's stuff I could buy on Amazon, but that's not the point. I like the savings on the physical copies more than the fucking $10 credit. And the $10 credit isn't the same savings as a $12 or $13 credit or savings you were getting right off the bat from the games you were buying. So that's, it's just silly. You, know, uh, you should get, I don't know, I feel like they need to offset it with, 
with more benefits to being a Twitch Prime user, you know? Like, I mean, there's a lot already. It, it does have quite a bit. Like, I'm, I, the benefits there are definitely really good, especially with the viewing, like, video and music and books and everything else that they do, so. So, but that's the thing, though. Like, I don't use Amazon Prime. Like, I don't use any of the features. I've never used any of it. Like, the only time I've ever been on Amazon Prime is because I wanted a Twitch Prime subscription to, like, either give somebody a free sub well, actually, usually that's almost how I've done it every time. So I could give somebody a free sub and get the Twitch loot. Like I did it last month because they were giving away uh, Trinity Prime and some other stuff on the Twitch loot. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, and like stuff like that is definitely uh, is definitely worth it too. So like those are those are pretty cool. Speaking of hard copies, though, do you guys like not miss the era where you could go to the store, buy a game, it came with a manual, didn't need updates, plugged it in, it just worked. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Remember the oh, yeah. Age? Well, even if you buy a physical yeah. copy anymore, they don't come with uh, instruction books or anything anymore. They they no. they come I with mean, a fucking pamphlet great. for their next game. There were the, the the one I think downside to that was that sometimes if a bug did get through, it was just a permanent bug. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, but you There's could no return bad. your game. Like I remember <laughs> having like buying Nintendo games and that came with the stupid cartridge and like the book. There was a couple of times like the game didn't work or whatever. You just brought it back to the store and they just gave you a new one. Yeah. Yeah. Like Those were the days one. when you bought a game and it was a complete game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like now we live in the era. Now, like, oh, now they here's this these new shells game. of games. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, they release a shell of a game and then they sell the rest of it to you after you I already I feel like you're board. betting on horses. Right. Gaming now. <laughs> it's like you Basically. went down to the game bazaar and you're like, this game's going to be good. I'm putting my money on that one. And they all race down the track and the other ones die from glitches and like developers quit and then one game crosses and that one's the winner and it becomes a good game years later and it's like what the fuck is going on that's yeah, honestly what right, it feels man. like now put my money on this horse ah oh, damn it <sighs> yeah i don't yeah, know you know it rough. can be done right but a lot of uh, a lot of companies have done it wrong you know oh yeah no that's by right. by far if they there's more than i've done it uh, wrong than right recently absolutely but, uh, oh, big time. Yeah, bungee <laughs> oh yeah bungee oh, bungee to start with that. ea with battlefront or like you even look at like no man's sky is like the classic like failure to success it shouldn't take two fucking years for your game after release to become playable mm -hmm. yeah i'm less mad at no man's sky though just because hello games is such a small developer you know like that's well, a different story than a triple a game developer like bungee releasing a shell of a game Mm -hmm. you know like well, well yeah there's a lot more to the no man's sky thing too if you look at like the pressure right. they received and they are a small company like none of that stuff got written when the game failed it was right. just this game's the biggest failure ever in all lies yeah nobody was like well it was also like, like the like promises yeah the promises made like if, you, if they would have just been upfront about about the game you know what it was going to include in the beginning i think it would have had way less but, of a backlash. You but know? who's to say about the inner workings of what was happening up to le to release? Maybe, like, Sean Murray was telling whoever... What, what was it? Sony was backing them or something? Mm -hmm. Maybe I think he so, was, yeah. like, talking to Sony, being like, we need more money, we need more dudes to work to get this stuff finished. And they were probably like, yeah, you'll get it. Just say it's fine. Like, who knows yeah. what was going on, right? No, like, you're absolutely get... right. It could have been that, like... You know, and the other thing is, too, like, there's probably, like, a lot of the stuff that they've added to the game, uh, it, like, was probably stuff that they were already working on anyways, you know, like... Well, like, like Sean the next even update said... is where they want the game. I feel like publishers, like Sony and other big publishers, like, when they're contracting a, de a developer to make a game, they're putting too much pressure on these developers to release a product. Too yeah. Soon. yeah. And these games come out too soon and they're not complete and then but then like the shareholders are fine with that because it's more money for them because people are paying full price for a game and then they're going to pay a bunch of money to get the full game you know and then they're going to pay money for the dlc and everything else but i feel like that shit's starting to change man there's been a backlash from the gaming community and then you've got developers like fortnite that are really changing the industry you know a lot of developers are having to change up and i think publishers too are having to change up the way that they that they approach selling their products and things just because like there's been a higher there's been a higher standard set yeah yeah like yeah. this low standard of like releasing broken games can't go on forever like people are getting too mad internet pitchforks for once are actually doing something well instead of just like complaining about nonsense and like yeah. it should start changing hopefully because like this can't go on like you can't just keep releasing broken games like when big companies start doing it like you said bungie and it's like oh we'll just do it and like who gives a fuck people will buy it anyway 
yeah like, and the, but so and that's the biggest thing too like as as consumers you know like internet pitchforks are one thing it can and it can cause companies to kind of like change their ways or start to take a different course or do different things but when it all comes down to it um like <sighs> But you gotta like, kind of like we we have to hit them where it hurts. Like, and if if we're gonna if we're gonna be mad about developers releasing games that are not finished, we have to also not buy those games. Yeah, but and that's, that's the thing. The not spend money on them, and that's the problem is that people still buy them, and so like, it, why if, would there be any okay, benefit to changing when it people is are still okay. buy them? to yeah. still buy those games it's like when no man's sky like again this is like we, we always reference this everybody bought it but then everybody demanded refunds so like yeah. the thing is like people have an acceptable tolerance for what's a bad game and there's like a threshold and if your game is not passed like that no man's sky part where you're like i need my fucking money back the company doesn't give a fuck yeah need, like people need to start demanding their bunny money back on like these false promises and stuff like that for every game that does that and eventually yeah. stop. And it, it's just and people are also... so conditioned to just take it yeah, so, you're yeah, right. Whatever. You're right, but we're also kind of talking about things very in a very kind of broad manner too, because well, like each game has its own instance. Like everything is unique. You know what I mean? Like um, every situation is unique. Because like for me, I didn't hear about No Man's Sky until it literally was like the day or two before it was gonna launch, and I was like, oh look, it's a space game. You fly around and you fucking explore space right and i was like that sounds cool i went out and bought it i played the game i had a ton of fun with it i played it for like a bunch of hours dude and then only then after i had played a bunch of it did i hear start hearing like bad reviews and then found out that the game was super hyped up before it launched and everything like if you didn't hear any of the hype about the game before it launched and then you just like picked it up and played it it was a great fucking game yeah, well, I'm kind of almost the game. same, except like I tracked all the hype, and then when I bought it, I was like, "This game's pretty fun," and like I played it for what it was, and I wasn't upset. Like I wasn't one of the people that was like, "Give me my fucking money back, you liars!" Like I didn't care there wasn't multiplayer. I was like, "Okay, I'm just gonna play this game and explore," and I had fun doing that. And I'm sure that like obviously, if you look on Reddit and look at the Galactic Hub community, there is a, a group of people that were like, "This game's pretty good, even though it's broken." But like, yeah. Yeah, like, and you know what, that was like the first thing I heard that was negative about it was that everybody was getting refunds for it. And I was like, what? Why would people be trying to get a refund? It's a fun fucking game. Yeah, like, I didn't honestly but, but it start was about to not the have hype. fun. Like, saying, when you say it's going to have something and then it doesn't have it, you know, that's like, people get mad. Oh, oh easy. Yeah. I didn't start not having fun with that game until, like, I had almost gotten to the end of it. That's when I was like, okay, yeah, I'm going from planet to planet. It's I kind stopped. of boring. Yeah, I was stopped like having fun with the game. Hours in. Yeah, I I stopped having fun with the game when I realized the ending of it, and it just like, like I don't want to give away any spoilers in case nobody's done it yet. But like, when you I feel finish like if it, nobody's playing it, it yet. They're not playing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking, it, when you know, when I got to the center of the galaxy, and then that was the end, and then I just started over. I was like, okay, that fucking sucks. Yeah. But yeah. other than that, other than that, I really did have fun with the game. There is an end to that, though. I don't know if you know that. Uh, like they've go, added more to it. There's 258 galaxies, or 248, and once you beat the last one, it's like that's the actual end. So you have to do that like almost 300. Jesus, we fucking. Yes, yeah, a lot. But, but when you was it like older, that when it first started though? Yeah, there was 248 like on launch. That was like. And if you finished them all, there was an ending to it. Yeah, because the whole thing is a computer simulation, right? Like I don't know if you, like you probably got that part out of it. Like you're yeah, just a kind of like ones and zeros inside of a computer simulation, and the system the system's glitched and it's like collapsing. It's mm -hmm. so, like. You go through all those and like that's like the end process of like the simulation. Oh jeez, okay. yeah. Well, but it's think... not that hard. Like once you get through the first one, your ship's usually like super upgraded, and you can find black holes. Like you can get through the next systems within a couple of hours. Oh yeah, right. Like there was a guy that did it before all the updates. He like got through all two hundred forty-eight. It's crazy. Well, I think uh, for news-wise, I think we're pretty good today. We got through just about everything. But man, yeah, battle royales. Like, no, no to developers. Fix your shit. Stop charging. Trying to charge for a niche market that's gonna probably die. It's kill itself off. It's gonna eat itself alive at some point. 
we've always brought this up, man. Like battle royales are their own worst enemy. Yep. They come out, they're super good, and then the next one comes out and kills it because they just fix something that developer didn't fix. Mm -hmm. And like it's the same wash, repeat, put a new skin on it, add some different cosmetics, throw in a couple gimmicks. Wow, we got a new exciting game, but it's the same foundation every time. Yeah, um, and I think the bottom line is that nobody's done anything good enough to to pull people away from the current battle royale games that are the top dogs, PUBG and Fortnite. We well, yeah. gotta remember, like all Nothing that stuff has started been getting huge. different enough. But all that stuff started getting huge, like in the gaming drought, like Battlefield One, and there was nothing, like the last COD, and like now, like yeah, Battlefield Five, the new COD, yeah, Destiny, like all these new big games are coming out. So much stuff to choose from, man. Exactly, and I think that's gonna have a heavy impact on all these like so-so battle royales. I think Fortnite will live on. I think PUBG is gonna suffer. Realm Royale is gonna have trouble. You know what I mean? Like all those games are gonna start having difficulties. Yeah, Realm Royale, real games. Already. Realm Royale is already struggling. It should have been their main IP. I don't know what happened. Yeah. The game is actually good, like, and they keep making it better and everything. But uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's hard to say. Like, uh, it was killing Paladins, and now Paladins is killing it again. So. But Paladins has a more competitive feel to it. And like I've said right. that before, too. Like, as soon as you can add but, something I mean, it's, competitively It's been around e a hell of a lot longer, too. So yeah, yeah. it's been fleshed out and has a community and everything, you know? Yeah. But it has longevity. Like, Battle Royales don't seem right. to have a longevity to them. All right. Like, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Alrighty, guys and gals, thank you all so much for joining us today for today's show. And we are not going to be back next week, unfortunately. Next week, we're, um, some of us are traveling to PAX West up in Seattle, Washington. So we're going to be trying to do some updates from there. However, there will no will not be an Insider uh, episode next weekend. So we're going to be cut back the following week after PAX. So there'll be quite a lot of stuff to cover, I'm sure, from PAX and and everything else too. So. Um, but yeah, hope everybody has a great rest of your weekend, and we'll see you all here in two weeks. Have a good one, all. Bye. Bye-bye.